What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how you can preserve your capital when you are swing trading in the stock market. And for those of you guys that don't know what swing trading is, I'm sure it's a minority of you guys, I'm sure it's only 2% of you all watching out there, but swing trading is when you buy a stock and you hold it for more than a day. That's pretty much it, right? You buy a stock and you sell it in two days, three days, four days, a week, two weeks, a month, two months, that is considered swing trading. Day trading, on the other hand, is when you buy a stock and you sell it that same day. So for example, you guys see Microsoft here. Let's say I were to buy Microsoft right now at $138.19. We go to that one day, one minute. You know, if I were to buy right here, sell in an hour, that would be considered a day trade because I bought and I sold in the same exact day. But if, if, but if I were to buy right now, you know, and I were to sell in two weeks at $140, let's say, for example, that would be considered a swing trade, right? And in this video, it's going to be a quick video. I'm going to be giving you guys my number one tip, what I personally do, again, when it comes to preserving capital while swing trading. And if you do find value in this video, if you do enjoy the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this. Let me know if you do this as well when you are swing trading. And consider subscribing to the channel if you do want to see further content from me. I'm producing content on the stock market, investing, trading, personal finance. If that's what you're into, this is the right place for you. So the number one thing that I do, what I personally really believe in is scaling into your positions, guys. And I can't stress this enough. And for those of you guys that have been following me for a while, you know that I talk about this a lot on the channel. A lot, a lot, a lot. I talk about this a lot on the channel. Scaling into your positions. What exactly does this mean? So let's say a stock that I'm actually watching right now to swing trade is FedEx, right? Ticker symbol FDX, FedEx Corporation. And all in all, guys, the summary of FedEx is it's been falling down in price for a while now pretty much over the past year. And the first thing I look at when I'm looking for a swing trade is, is that stock at a dip? And is that stock reversing and confirming the reversal to the upside to begin an uptrend? That's the first thing that I'm personally looking at. And since FedEx is confirming that, right, it seems like we found a bottom at 150. We're reversing you know, we're actually making uh, higher highs and higher lows. It seems like we're uptrending. We're breaking out of moving average resistances. We're breaking out of this 170 resistance and holding it as a new support. Since these things are starting to line up, which again, are kind of the mental checklist, the mental cues that I look for before entering a swing trade, since they're all lining up, now I'm considering adding money. And what am I going to do, guys? Am I going to add, you know, $10,000? Let's say that's my goal position. Am I going to add add $10,000 up front right away? Or am I going to scale into my positions? Well, the answer to that is I'm going to scale into my positions, right? And let me show you guys exactly what I mean by this. So let's say again, my goal position is $10,000, right? I want to be in with $10,000 in FedEx and my exit is going to be at this point $185. That's the gap that if FedEx confirms the bounce at 170, you know, that's the gap it could fill up to 185. And that gives us about, you know, a 7-8% margin of profit if we were to get in from here and sell it perfectly at 185 in the perfect scenario. And of course, it doesn't always play out perfectly, guys, but for the sake of this example, let's pretend that this plays out beautifully. So I take my $10,000 and me personally, I scale into my positions 10 to 15% at first. So let's say we broke the 170 resistance. This is a good direction or good confirmation that we could fill the gap up to 180. I wouldn't want to add all my money here right off the bat because we didn't really confirm the bounce on 170 quite yet. So what I would do here is I would scale into the position with about 10 to 15 percent. So that would be around a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars, and maybe even sometimes 20 percent, which in this case would be two thousand dollars. That's what I would add right now, right? I would add the two thousand dollars right now. 
then I would see how it ends up playing out, right? If we were to, you know, bust the 170 support and then start to trend back down to the low 160s, I would cut my losses there. And this is very important because you guys read in the title how to preserve money. The whole idea here is to preserve money. We want capital on our side. We don't want to lose the capital, right? So in this case, we preserve money because we scaled into the position, right? We went in with $2,000, $1,500. So that initial loss from us cutting our losses from the stock breaking the pattern, we didn't lose as much money as we would have if we hopped in all the way with $10,000 right off the bat, right? So let's say, you know, that uh, negative scenario played out. We put in $2,000 at $170. You know, we broke $170, which is the uh, spot we need to hold above in our trading scenario. You know, let's say we broke $170 and then we cut losses at 2%, right? 2% loss at $2,000, what is that off the top of my head? Um, that's probably around $50, $40, $50 loss right there, right? But let's say you went in all the way with $10,000, you didn't scale in, you put your whole account, screw it, right? Throw the whole account in the position, 2% loss, you would lose $200 on that $10,000, right? That's kind of the idea here of scaling in because if it doesn't go your way initially, you know, you won't lose as much money if you, as if you would have if you put your whole position in, right? And another thing about scaling in, guys, is I personally don't fight against the trend, right? And I'm sure a lot of you have heard this in the trading world, in the swing trading world, and stock world in general. Don't fight against the trend, right? If you're looking to short-term trade. It's different if you're looking to long-term invest, you know, dollar cost averaging. Sometimes the stock is downtrending and you and you buy into the weakness, that's a different scenario, right? That's long-term investing. We're talking about swing trading right now. When it comes to swing trading, I don't fight the trend. So let's say, you know, we were to break, that would be where I caught losses, right? But let's say we confirmed 170 and we continued this trend and I added my $2,000 at 170 and we continued the trend to 175. Maybe we pulled back and retested 172 and then we confirmed the pop there and the continuation. This is me uh, not fighting the trend because you know, the trends upwards, and I would add more money as it continues to push up, right? Me fighting the trend would be if we continue to downtrend, and I'm thinking to myself, this is going to reverse, I'm going to just keep adding money, averaging down, it's going to come back. That's me fighting the trend. That's me going against the trend in general. But if the trend continues to pop up, it continues to pull back, our side comes down, we see the healthy pullbacks, which again, are very healthy. You know, those typically over open up, you know, entry points, and they really just confirm the trend as the bottom out and then continue to push up. And that's how I view, you know, entry points. I like getting in as the trend continues to confirm itself up. So an example again, guys, you know, just to continue that example, let's say the perfect scenario here would be again, $2,000 at 170, another $2,000 if we popped up to let's say 175, pulled back to 172, I'd add another $2,000 here, maybe 172 173 now I'm in with $4,000, and as long as this trend continues to push up, as long as I'm not fighting the trend, but I'm riding the trend, you know, let's say we popped up to 176 and pulled back, I'd add even more money at, let's say, 174 and now I'm in with $6,000, 60% of my goal position, and you guys kind of get it, right, you know, we continue to ride up, we continue to follow the trend, and we continue continue to add money as it goes up. And then ultimately, you know, when we're up at the 180s, when we're close to that sell point at 185, we're in about 70, 80, 90% of the position. Sometimes, you know, if we've already built a full position, a pretty big position, we might not add that full $10,000, right? Sometimes, you know, I'd cut it out at like eight, dollars $9,000. It really just depends on what the trend's looking like. And at that point, you know, we've built, I would have built a strong position size, pretty strong average. And at 185, you know, I'm not going to grab the whole eight, nine percent like we saw in the beginning because I was averaging up, but I'd grab about a three, four, five percent at least profit, you know, if my average was around 175. And you guys can see that for yourself, right? Three, four, 
four or five percent from that 175 average and that's the whole idea right preserving capital at first you know if you're looking to hop in uh pretty early into a position or early enough where it hasn't confirmed the full-on trend i think it's best to hop in with a 10 15 20 percent and then add more money as the trend confirms itself as things continue to push up that's what i personally do guys and it's really helped me in terms of conserving my capital which again capital is the number one thing you need you need to conserve that when you are trading in the stock market so let's say we do another quick example um intc right now is one that i'm also looking to swing trade perfect example here guys you can see um you know if we go back a bit intc right now is a bit overbought right so let's say we were to pull back and then retest this $50 level of support that was an old resistance you guys can see it from a couple months ago obviously when we broke out of that resistance we made it a new support let's say we pulled excuse me let's say we pulled back here and made it a new support this would be a spot where I would consider adding maybe 15 20 percent of my ten thousand dollars so I'd put two thousand dollars here and then as we can uh really confirm this and then popped from there you know to fill the gap up to $52 that's where I'd add even more money let's say we bounced that $51 we went up to 5150 again that is where I'd scale in with another $2000 I'd be in with $4000 at that point and let's say my next spot of confirmation where I want to add more money again we're not fighting the trend we're riding the trend would be if we were to break $52 which is this resistance and into the 52s to hold that as a new support that would be where i would add another two thousand dollars being in with a total of six thousand dollars at this point right and that's pretty much it guys right preserving capital comes down to in my opinion scaling into positions being very strategic and cautious where you are entering the stock understanding moving averages resistances supports and if you guys need more clarity on this just subscribe to the channel again i'm making videos on this stuff every single day i have a ton of videos i have over 500 videos on youtube talking about this stuff and honestly, guys, the more you look at charts, the more you draw, draw out lines, the more you're watching, um, you know, movements during the day, the more you'll understand this stuff and you'll be able to almost, you know, build uh, like an intuition to where entering positions seems smart, where it seems stupid. You know, it really takes time and, and to build this this kind of intuition when it comes to um, the stock market. So I'm going to wrap up the video here, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Drop a comment down below. What are your thoughts on this? Do you impl uh, uh, um, implicate this into your own strategy? I would really love to know what you have to think about that. And consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. It means a lot to everybody out there subscribing to the channel and watching these videos i really do appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching thanks for taking the time to watch this video peace out guys